All right, let, let me get this back out. Let's take a look at these markets on how to find your targets for the day on any given market. So let me get rid of this. We'll do a video on this so you can see. All right, we know we have our three setups that we look for during the day. We have three types of setups. We have zone breakouts. That's where we're looking to buy high and sell higher to catch the wrongly positioned traders or short low and buy lower. These are all the videos that we do. We did a live video on a trade before it came up, 15 minutes before it came up. That's on our website. You can check out so you understand how the zone breakouts work. You see a lot of charts I sent out in the, in the, um, in the emails on this setup. This is where we're trying to buy high and sell higher above HVA or short low and buy lower below low value area. So we have zone breakouts. That's our one setup. That's our top setup when we get outside of value. There's two value areas, daily value areas. We look at it, our two to four hour our profiles that automatically profile. We have a high value area here. And we have a low value area here. So this is high value. We call this high value area, which is HVA. We have a low value area on market profile. That's low value area. This has worked for 39 years, has not changed. This is how you find gaps in the markets. This is how you're going to find your targets for your trade setups during the day. That's low value area or LVA. This blue line is the control point. That's the most volume that, that's traded on the instrument, which acts as natural support and resistance. And that's how these low value and high value areas are der derived. So you're going to get these daily values that pop up every single day. Before you start trading on any given market, you need to look at where these high value area, this high value area is and where the low value area is. That's going to tell you when the market becomes imbalanced. Imbalanced means that's where there's no underlying resistance above HVA or underlying support below low value area. And that's where we can find some zone breakout trades that can create some major speed for us these are where you see these charts I send out that run 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 points on the S&P. All right, so we got to try to look for trades, shorts, when we come below the low value area here. This is an imbalanced market to look to sh uh, short low by lower. with zone breaks in an imbalanced market. Then above HVA, we're going to look to buy high, sell higher, and catch the rolling position traders. With zone breaks. Alright, so that's that's our zone breakout trade. Our system will automatically turn a yellow entry bar on our charts, which I'll show you in a second, when we break out of this level. And that will be our entry. So when you're inside of HV and LVA, you're in what's called a balanced market. So we're balanced right now. In a balanced market, that's an accumulation distribution area where they're going to chop back and forth. It's a real chop market. So this area is balanced. 
you will not see a lot of speed inside of a balanced market. What you will see is you'll see an oscillating market. It's oscillating. Hit high value area, hit high value area, coming down to low value area. Now you can see it, it keeps hitting. It's not breaking out. That's why market profile works so well. So you don't want to look for zone breaks in an oscillating market. It's oscillating between low value and high value. You can see it just hit its head up there. Coming down to low value, hitting its head now also. What we can do, and it's a five-minute chart, uh, Thomas, going 10 days back. Five-minute charts going 10 days back. You said if you want to match my profile, five-minute chart going 10 days back if you want to match it. I saw you type that in the room yesterday. So what we want to do then, we want to see when the market gets imbalanced. If we're going to trade zone breaks over here, if we want to trade my set up in the room over here where you see these big runs in the market we want to trade zone breakouts we want to become imbalanced an imbalanced area is above market profile right here imbalance you're above hva right here imbalanced you're below low value area because when you get an imbalanced market, what's the market like to do? It likes to run to the previous market profile. Now, market profiles worked for 39 years, thank you to Peter Stoudemire, that came out with price profile in 1985 and volume profile, which we look at here in 1994. So it's, it stood the test of time by showing us all the participants in the market. This is all the algorithms, hedge funds, prop firms, banks, everybody professional amateur traders it lets us know where the participants are in the market why is that important because we want to find out when the market becomes imbalanced when the market becomes imbalanced that creates speed speed to the downside here speed to the upside here so you can see once I get outside this value area and I start closing a candle outside the body not the wicks these wicks here don't count. You see they tried to wick them this morning, and all it was is a re reversal at 7.15 this morning. You want the body of the candle. You, you want to see a body of the candle, the open versus close. Start closing outside of profile here or below here. Okay? Then we can look for zone breakouts. While you're inside a balanced market, you can look for two other setups. You can look for your outer edge slingshots which we had yesterday so big ones yesterday in the S&P on the outer edge slingshots and we go videos on how to do that and the third one is a failure trade a failure trade is when you've been outside in an imbalanced market and you come back inside of a balanced market if that happens for 39 years, the same setup. If you've been outside of an imbalance and you cut back inside a profile, that first retracement, you want to try to get short, and your target's going to be all the way down, coast to coast to the next profile. That's how we trade failure trades. So you want to see a failure trade come up when you're cutting back inside profile. And our yellow, or our indicator, will will tell you when that happens. It automatically comes up. The outer edge slingshots, our indicator with an alarm system on your speakers, automatically comes up. That's when you want to use these two setups. You want to use these two setups when the market's balanced. You can also use the outer edge trade in the direction of the imbalanced market, but you never look for a failure trade against an imbalanced market meaning if the market breaks out to the upside you do not want to take failure trades because you're against overall push you're in the imbalance market in other words if we break out to the upside you don't want to take a failure trade you want to take a failure trade when you're busting back inside a profile or in an in a balanced market vice versa the outer edge trades you want to take them in a balanced market like this in between profile when they fire 
forward with overall imbalance trend. You can't take them with trend. Let's say we break out and we come to the outer edge buy. That that's that's a beautiful trade. They don't come up very often during the month. When they do, those are typical runs of 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 S&P point runs because what it does, it gets to the outer edge, gets a liquidity grab, and it just goes straight north or below here to straight south. So now that we know the plan of what we do with market profile, where's our targets then? Your daily targets are going to be from previous market profile. So what you want to do, previous move uh, profile has memory because that's where the order flow was generated. That's where the volume is generated. There's two points of interest that generates profile. A very high value, a high volume area that generates these levels and a very low value area, okay, which is a rejection area or an acceptance area would be the high volume. So you got a high volume and you got low volume, which is a rejection area. That is what derives these profile levels automatically for you. So we want to see where this market got rejected and accepted the last two days. And then we can find our targets going forward if we break out into an imbalanced market right here where we're going to get speed in the market. If it gets imbalanced, we want to find out where our targets are to the upside if we get some zone breaks to the upside. Vice versa, we want to find out where to find our targets to the downside if we break the imbalance market. Let's find out where we can find these levels. What you do, you really only need to go two days back on our market profile levels. We don't use a standard market profile levels. They're not going to match up. So any profile levels that you find uh, out there in the regular indicators, they're not going to match ours. You want to skinny it down, and we want to find where previous profile is. Skinny it down. Here's yesterday's high value area. So this will be one breakout level target. Here's the control point. That's the second breakout target. Here's a low value. Go back another day, there's a high value. Now what I did is I created my targets. These are my targets for the day. There's low value, high value. These are gaps in the market now. Now I have gaps in the market, tradable gaps to trade. So now what I've just done, I looked at previous memory of market profile where all this accumulation distribution happened. Look at this. All this accumulation distribution of the control point, accumulation distribution at the low value area. Now I've created a zones to trade. I traded tradable gaps. Now I know my tradable gaps are here to look for big runs. Once you get into trades, that should be your targets. There's a big tradable gap. So when I look at it now, my tradable gaps are quite big. Let me get this off here. Now my tradable gaps are, I know my targets. Because now my target is if I break through 72, I got to run to 57. I break 57, I got a possible run to 42. 40 42 has a high probability of being a session low. My second tradable gap, 95 has a high probability of being a session high. Or at least great targets for us to get up to. So by doing that then, is I set my targets in. So now I know where my target's going to be. So once I have my targets, I can skinny that down. And now I got my tradable gaps. Get that out of the way. So now that we have our tradable gaps in, we can see where the big holes are out in the market. Obviously, a big hole in the market would be breaking 72 today to 57. That would be a really big hole in the market. Not a really big hole here. 83 to 88. Not really exciting to the upside. I get excited about holes like this, 72 down to 57.
Let's look for entries now. How would we enter? What you want to do, you want to use this chart at this level to see when it gets strong or weak when you're getting into an imbalance market. We want to see these zones be in the direction of the break. So let's say we're trying to break out here at high value area this morning, right? It's trying to break here this morning. It wicked. It didn't close a body of the candle, but at least it's trying to break out. If you're trying to do a buy, you want these zones, this is a session, to be green. If you're buying up beginning above HVA, you want these zones to be green. Now you're going with trend direction. Those have been tested for 30 years. These are the top zones for the S&P using our past 30 years of analysis. So it's green, so we're good. The second thing you want to be a strong trend, you want this pegged at 123.81, which is pegged right now at 123.81. You want this oscillator pegged at 123.81 on the 12020 chart. Right now, if you look at the oscillator, look at the value down here, it's 123.81. So right now we have this checked. We're checked here as being trend up. We're trying to get into a tradable gap right now. So that's checked. So we can look for a zone breakout now on this smaller Renko size. So if we get outside this Renko size, as long as we stay 123.81, there's going to be a buy signal coming up. Our target's a small tradable gap, though. It's only 88 and a quarter. We're going to have to scale. And the runner, the next runner will be to 95. So how you can do this is you can look at your 120 chart. How can I use this trend chart and look for this entry chart? As long as I'm paid at 12381, it stays at 12381. And the second close here, you'll turn yellow. That is an entry with a target of 88 and a quarter, very small tradable gap this morning. But let's say this gap wasn't here, then you'd, you'd see this market has some pretty good speed up to 95. But what you're doing is you're letting the larger Rico size here, the entry right here was 86, that's a live entry, 86 and a half. Now I hit 88 and a quarter. That's two points right now in the S&P walking through this trade with you. The runner, I got a target at 95. So you're long now at 86 and a half. My target's 95, so you want to scale into this two-point push. You're into a tradable gap and let the runner run. Where's the runner target? Your runner target's up to 95 and a quarter. So what we just done is we established where the high value area is at, where the imbalance market's going to happen, and where we want to find this zone break to occur, which it just did. Using, as long as we stay above pegged at 123.81, which it did. I don't care about this because this is the 120.20. This is a half of that. This is a 110.10. This is an entry chart, and this is a trend chart. You can use the 120.20 for entries also if you'd like. It's a larger Rinko size, but your stocks can be bigger. Remember, these are Rinko sizes, so 120.20 means between this Rinko high and low, there's 20 ticks. So you, you're at least going to have to have a 20 tick tar, a 20 tick stop. Where here you have a 10 tick stop minimum, right? On the target. But that's how you trade these zone breaks. So when you see all these charts where they run 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 point runs, it's because these two charts are lining up. The zone break. Now why wouldn't you take the one before that then? Let's go win not to trade. All right, let's go win not to trade. Why not this one? The ones I do not like to take on the smaller Rinko chart is when they break out the exact same time. What does that mean? If I get a yellow entry bar here on a zone break at 837.05, and consequently at 837.05, I get the same zone break on my smaller Rinko size, what does that mean? 
it means I'm not into a strong, strong market because I've never fired a zone trade to the upside on the 120 yet. But as soon as this 120 fired, it's already strong trend. So I can check down to my smaller Renko size and I can start picking this market apart. And I can pick the market apart by waiting for this to stay above 123.81, not taking that 110 the exact time that it fired off here, take the next one that comes up as long as this is pegged at 123.81. It was, right? Because this is a cup and handle breakout, one of the most powerful setups you can get in the market for continuations. That's a cup and handle right there. These are cup and handle breakouts that automatically come up with zone trend and breakout. So that entry at 86 and a half has been as high as 90 now. So three and a half points has moved up, knowing our tradable gap going into it. Ron says, what about the candle strategy the HVN not closing above it? You can still take trades into a tradable gap by breaking it at the same time it's first breaking market profile. Here's the difference, Ron. Remember this rule of thumb, and I saw some of you guys doing this yesterday. I don't like taking the 110 trade when it's first breaking the 120 at the same time. If these fire at the same time, that's typically when you're first breaking outside of HP and LVA because it's trying to get inside an imbalanced market. What I like to do and educate traders to do is wait for this 120 to fire and then look for your 110 to fire to get you in a hard trend. Does that make sense? Because then what it does, that will confirm that the HVA is breaking. Okay, that's you can you can trade these breaking through the HVA right at the same time. If you're going to do that, let the 120 fire in and take the next 110. Because if it's really strong, Ron, you're going to get multiple entries off this trade especially if you're in a big tradable gap. Right now, on a smaller tradable gap, so our target, three and a half points. But if this wasn't here to 95, you'll probably get two or three of these that fire. Does that make sense now? So you can trade when it first breaks through HVA, inch your bar, but you're going to know hard trend for the day throughout the day if it closes by the open versus close. Doesn't mean you can't trade the inch your bar, if you do that, let the 120 fire, get going, and then take a 110 entry only if we stay pegged at 123.81. You gotta stay pegged at 123.81. Make sense? If you do that, these setups don't come up very often when these match up. If you let the 120 get in motion with a strong market, and after it gets a setup, a yellow bar and gets in motion, and then take the 110 trades, off a strong market at 123.81 or negative 123.81, go back to your trade blotter and look at how the market responds in that sweet spot. That's a sweet spot of the market. Because you're already in motion right here. Okay, that's how you can use a 120 with a 110. And you don't have to take these setups right here because they come at the same breakout time as the 120 does. If you want to trade off a smaller time frame, let it get rolling. Because guess what it's doing? It's preying on the counter trend traders, especially if you're in a large tradable gap. I identified this tradable gap earlier this morning. I was correct in my analysis, and how was I correct? I was correct because not my opinion means nothing. It looks at market profile, previous market profile. Previous market profile was here. That's the order flow. Sometimes it will stop the market within a couple ticks. We've seen that the last couple days on my two tradable gaps. Last week, it happened four out of five trading days. It came within two to four ticks of these tradable gaps and reversed. That is order flow. So not only do we know our targets, we know exactly when to pull the trigger on getting into these tradable gaps. We knew this one was the entry to fire in. And it's a small tradable gap, obviously, so it's not running hard. It's early this morning, 849. But you'll enter the same way on tradable gaps that run hard. When you see tradable gaps that run hard like this, when you start running down, 
Yesterday at the close, we had some great trades at the close. Man, it was beautiful in the S&P. Absolutely gorgeous. Look at all these trades you had. Look at all these trade setups. One, here, let's get it down. Here is the close, which I, I get excited about this. I tell you traders all the time, look for, look at the at the um, at power hour. Power hour trade right there. I said at 350, the power hour comes in. I keep talking about this over and over and over again if you trade the afternoon trades. 350 is when these algorithms kick in. Look at these setups. That was a 68 short, 56 short, 55 short, 52 short, 49 short. All within 10 minutes of trading fell 10 S&P points. Thanks for coming to work. Why? Time of day trade, power hour. We were strong down on our larger oscillator. And it just got cranked into the close. We had an outer edge trade that set it up too at 41. And then right here, the power hour. Look at the power hour. On the big 120 chart, it started right here when it got weak. And here's your 110 trades all the way down. Even gave a 120 trade there. But look, let me skinny this down so you understand the concept of using a 110. Small Rico chart when the big trend started. Beautiful. Just absolutely beautiful getting cranked. That's when it started. The 120 started here. And this is the 120 started right there and gave you a 10 point drop in the S&P. Why? Because we were trending down hard and gave multiple entries off the 110. That's how you trade it. Let the 110 get rolling. You're good to go. Now, let's talk about failure trades before I get this video off real quick. Failure trades too, guys. This is a failure trade. It will be against zone trend. If, if, if you're trading hard, here's another trade setup. At, let's go 429 this morning. It happened. Let's see. Here we go. So if you see we're trending hard, like on the upside or downside, off of a 123.81, and a failure comes up, we had it yesterday happen also during the day. Let me get one. These are all zone breaks. There's a failure. So if you see it right here where we start getting strong again, you can trade these failure trades. There's an outer edge. That's what's called an outer edge, and that's what's called a failure trade automatically comes up. 